Kenny Rota, WHBC. How do you explain the difference in the halves getting outscored by 23 in the second half of this one, Brad? Kyrie Irving and LeBron James would be the two answers. I mean, they were unbelievable. Irving was incredible um, at the end of the uh, third, and then obviously LeBron had all those baskets in the fourth. I thought that we played, you know, as well as we've played maybe the entire playoffs in the first half. Um, we were really good defensively. Offensively, I thought we moved and cut and played together. And um, and then for whatever reason, um, all those things became a little bit more difficult. Um, but that's what great teams do. Um, they make it really hard on you. And so, um, as we all know, a 10-point lead at halftime is nothing, especially against those guys. But, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. Those two guys were incredible. Did you feel like it was a missed opportunity at all when you, you have LeBron on the bench in an unusual situation for seven minutes and you didn't extend the lead? And what did Kyrie do to keep them kind of Yeah, you know, David Aldridge asked me that on the way back out to the court. I think, Adam, the thing that I would say, they still have two all-stars on the floor. You know, with, with, with the best player in the world, they, they go to Unreal, but they're still a pretty darn good team, you know, when those guys are out there. And, and uh, Irving again, end of the second, end of the third. Did some incredible things uh, with the ball, and you know we had really good athletes, quick guys that that make things tough on people, um, guarding him, and he was able to raise up and make a lot of tough shots. Uh, he was able to get bias and make tough shots in the paint. Um, you know, again, sometimes I think that I'll go look at it, see what all the things that we did wrong, but you know, I think it's more of a tip your hat kind of thing with those two guys tonight. Uh, Brad Ray Jeske, ESPN 990. Uh, what are the great, uh, the positives maybe, or the takeaways you're going to take back to Boston? You come here one and one, uh, and you're going home. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we we put together a lot of good basketball here. We didn't put it, enough of it together tonight um, to win the game. As they were scoring and they were making all those incredible plays, I thought we had. I mean, we had what we had three turnovers at halftime. We had nine in the second half. That's a that's a killer for us. We can't turn the ball over that much because it leads to points. Um, but again, I thought we played as well as as we've played in the first um, on that end of the floor. Certainly in the last couple of games. Um, and you know, we know that we have a small margin, but we know that um, if we play the next play the right way. And we got a chance to win that possession. And, you know, you just try to add those up to win the game. Um, and, again, I, I thought our guys did a lot of good things. I'll go back and look again, and we'll, be, uh, we'll figure out what we need to get better at. Brad Gary Walsh from Boston Globe. Um, you attributed to Irving and LeBron hitting shots, but when Irving gets in that kind of zone, is there something you can do? I mean, one on one, he's he's wearing everybody. Well, I thought we could have done a better job of of helping on the paint touch, like being over and and showing ourselves a little bit. But you got Corver standing over there for a lot of that. You've got Love standing out there. You've got the different shooters, J.R. Smith, and um, and obviously LeBron. And so you you there, yeah. There's choices. I'm not sure there's right choices um, because they expose you any which way you go, but. When he gets going like that, the, the, the ones that we'll have to go back and look at are the ones he got at the rim because those are the ones that, um, you know, we got to be able to get to the threat of the rim attack quicker. Brad, Steve Bopet, Boston Herald. Um, last game you caught them in a momentum shift and you wrote it and made the plays down the stretch. Tonight, did it almost show more about your guys because Cavaliers knew what was coming and you guys still were able to do what you would did. We we played really well in the first half. Um, I thought when they came out of the gates in the third quarter that um, we obviously knew that we are going to have to weather that storm, and I thought initially we did. Um, but, you know, we were going to have to play both halves equally well. Um, they were really good. And, again, when, when you have Irving doing what he's doing, obviously, again, we'll go back and look at what we can do different. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, we got a. I thought we got a good shot from them, and played pretty well for most of the game. But that stings when you can't pull those out.
Chris Gasper, Boston Globe. Brad, I just want to ask you, you know, you're tipping the cap to them, obviously, but they shot better than 70% in the second half. Is it real? Is that just all them? I mean, it was that kind of night for them? Or? No, I think we need to go, like I said, the ones that I'm most concerned about are the ones at the rim. I just didn't think we reacted to the rim threat enough, um, both, you know, I, I remember vividly a LeBron um, going down the middle and dunking. They, Irving had multiple when he got to the rim, and we were either late or didn't provide enough resistance for him to miss. Um, and then there were a couple where we did, and he made it. But, you know, again, we'll go back and we'll look at it, figure out which ones we can do better. Coach Amanda Fluker, Ed for Celtics.com. How's Jay feeling right now in that strained thigh? Jay Crowder? Jay Crowder, yeah. Uh, he has not said anything to me about it. So, um, I mean, I thought he played, um, you know, obviously shot the heck out of it in the first. And, you know, it's a hard night when you've got to guard that guy all night. Thanks.